is the story of a young woman named Diana Roberts. This woman was from Eastern Kentucky. She was 31 years old. She was last seen on either August the 4th or the 7th of 2013 at the Jamestown Village Trailer Park on the Knott Perry County line. It was alleged that she had gone to Ohio with a friend to attend a doctor's appointment. However, all of her personal items were left behind, including her purse and her wallet. Very, very few women go anywhere without their purse, their wallet, their keys. She was supposed to be going to a doctor's appointment. She would, at the very least, have taken her wallet with her um, insurance card inside, probably her ID. And for her to go to a doctor's appointment and leave those things behind, um, it just it really stuck out to me. Law enforcement questioned the friend that Diana was supposed to have been traveling with, but she was clueless about this story. She had heard nothing about them supposedly taking a trip together to Ohio. She knew nothing about Diana having a doctor's appointment, and this was the first she'd heard about any of this. Diana's family believe they know who is responsible but they have a lack of information to prove anything. Her family did relay to me that Diana's boyfriend at the time was supposed to take a polygraph, but he did not show up. So here's what we know about Diana Roberts. She was a white female. She was 31 years old at the time she disappeared. She was five foot four and weighed about 160 to 200 pounds. She has a history of substance abuse. She had blonde hair and green eyes. She had the following tattoos, an artistic design of a wizard on her left calf, and the names Caitlin, Tyler, and Ryan, and Candace on her left, on her right ankle. I'm, I'm guessing these were the names of her children. Um, she was last seen at the Jamestown Village Trailer Park in Feisty, Kentucky. She was supposed to be traveling to Ohio. However, the friend that she, it was said she was going to be traveling with, had no knowledge of this trip. Did anyone go search that area? Did anyone check with any doctors that maybe she was known to have gone to before in Ohio, I think I would have um, checked to see if she had ever been to a doctor in Ohio, and if she had, I probably would have contacted them and asked if they knew if she had shown up for a doctor's appointment. I don't think anybody really believed that. Now, I'm going to read this, and I'm not going to mention this man's name, but this is supposed to have been the boyfriend that she was with at the time. This was posted very recently, within the last week, on Facebook. There's some photographs of him. Now, normally I would share this woman's name and all this information, But as of right now, this is just her opinion. Maybe she knows this. She has inside information. I don't know this to be factual, so I'm not going to share any names here. I'm just going to read this. This is what this is the daughter of Diana Roberts. Everyone who makes articles and writes stories about missing persons and so forth, please read this. The boyfriend who was with Diana Roberts at the time of her disappearance, it is said that he also unalived, this is the word that they use, Natasha Fugate Jones. Now, she is also a well-known person in this area who has been missing. 
It has been rumored by many people who have commented on this woman's story that this man, this boyfriend of Diana Roberts had was responsible for the disappearance or murder possibly of more than one woman. Now, like I said, this is all hearsay to me. There may be, you know, evidence out there that I can't find, but I'm just going to see if I can find a link between these two women. If he was supposed to have been dating both of these women. Now, she says that she is working with their um, son, that this Natasha Fugate Jones's son, and that they are working together to raise the uh, stories, to keep the stories alive on social media about these two innocent women who did not deserve to die. We plan to update the, our articles on both, and if you feel free to share... I reached out to this woman to let her know about my YouTube channel and to let her know that I was interested in doing this story. I will reach out to her one more time before I post this just to see if anything else might, that she might have something that she wants me to include. Uh, we do not care if we have to scream, cry, and protest. We will do it to our last breath to get justice for these two women. Neither of them have even had a proper burial. If they're alive or dead, they believe them to have been both murdered by the same man. They say this man is out here walking around every day and other women are in danger. So now here is the original story that I came across. To all my girls that live in Pikeville, Kentucky, please read this. This man murdered my mother in cold blood, and he has murdered multiple other women from Perry County. His Facebook now says he works at Food City in Pikeville, Kentucky, so please be aware of your surroundings. If you are within arm's length of this man, he is very dangerous. It is surprising to me that he can get a job anywhere, considering everyone knows his story. His own kids would talk about him and praise him for killing innocent women when they were in school. That is so sad and disturbing. Unfortunately, my mother, Diana Roberts, has never been found or received any kind of justice. This man has never been investigated at all. Isn't it crazy that these cops will bust someone for drug use in five seconds and everyone says, praises them and says what a great job it is that they did but they're letting men walk around telling people that they murdered and and their families are talking openly about this man saying that he murdered these two women and yet no one has ever even investigated him even if it wasn't an official investigation i think that they should at the very least look into these rumors and the connection that he has with these missing women. So, this young woman goes on to say, I won't stop posting until something is done. But if you are in the Pikeville, Kentucky area, please keep protection on you at all times. If you go into Food City, if you come into contact with this man. He is very dangerous. If you have any information about her, please contact the Kentucky State Police at 606-435-6069. Natasha Fugate Jones is a witty, beloved, and devoted mother of two. Natasha is known as a funny she adores her two sons. Natasha, now see here it says Natasha is known as, now the next line is Natasha was. Natasha was a great person whose kids were the highlight of her life. 
At the time of her disappearance, Natasha was supposed to be in an inpatient drug rehabilitation facility in Harlan, Kentucky, but she walked away and returned to her grandmother's home where her two sons were. Uh, both of these women had that one thing in common, is that they were both known substance abusers. This man, I don't know if uh, he was the boyfriend of both of them. I'm going to get to some more information on her. Now, Diana Roberts went missing in August of 2013. Natasha went missing in May of 2015. She was last seen leaving her grandmother's home on May the 7th, 2015. Before she left, she wrote a note to her sons and left it under one of their pillows. According to reports, the note explained that she was going to find somewhere for the three of them to live, adding that she loved them and that she would be gone for a few days, but that she would be back. It was nothing unusual for her to go to a friend or to go for a walk. It started getting dark, and I told the boys to get ready for bed. I went to check on them. Natasha's son was reading a note that his mom had wrote to him. She told them that she would be gone for three days and to not be sad. She would be back. I didn't want the boys to know I was worried, said Natasha's mother, Ola Chaffins. Now, this was Natasha's grandmother, rather. Natasha left the home while her grandmother was gone to a doctor's appointment. They said that she was picked up by an unidentified female friend. Some reports state that Natasha left the home to go to a party. According to the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, Natasha was dropped off and left with an unidentified male acquaintance on a strip mine. Mountaintop coal mining, where they go up onto the mountain and remove the coal, and they call it a strip job or a strip mine. A lot of people go to those, and they ride four-wheelers and side-by-sides and um, trucks and jeeps and that type of thing. Just go, it's on top of mountains, and a lot of people go there and hang out. So what happens next may be even more strange. According to this male acquaintance, Natasha randomly ran off into the woods, and she never came back. A month later, Natasha's grandmother reported her missing. I just figured she was going to stay somewhere for the night. It went for two weeks, and I was really starting to get worried, but I didn't let the boys know that I was worried. So as of today, Natasha remains missing, and her case remains unsolved. Authorities continue investigating her case and have recently received assistance from Texas EquiSearch. We want her brought home. We are looking for her every way in the world. At the time of her disappearance, Natasha was 31 years old, the same age as Diana Roberts. She was a Caucasian female with bleach blonde hair and green eyes. She was between 5 foot 7 and 5 foot 10 and weighed about 130 pounds. Natasha has a tattoo of a flower on her lower back, the outline of a butterfly on her upper back. Her hair is naturally brown, but it was dyed blonde at the time. Natasha is known to have struggled with addiction. If you have any information regarding Natasha's disappearance, you may call the Kentucky State Police at the same phone number, 606-435-6069. Now, did they give any information on to who this man was? Was it supposed to have been the same man in Diana Roberts' story that supposedly told the police that she was... Um, that she just up and ran off into the woods? I mean, what reason did he give that she just up and ran into the woods? Did someone else pull up? 
onto the strip mine where where she was was she was it just the two of them her and this man alone did anyone else see her there with him who was the friend that supposedly came and picked her up the disappearance of a mother of two brought me to rural kentucky this week in hazard kentucky this is a city located in Perry county this is in the appalachian mountains um, it just goes on to talk more about Hazard and the history of Hazard, Kentucky. As in many rural areas, you see that relationships cross over small communities. And what may be discussed in a small town like Feisty, Kentucky, it, it, this is a smaller community that is located about 14 miles from Hazard. And if you find anything about the connection to this man. And if this man that is mentioned in the story of Diana Roberts is the same one mentioned in the story of Natasha Jones. Now, I, I watched a video where the police talked about her disappearance of, of Jones. And they don't mention him. Of course, they're not going to mention a name. They might not mention a name unless he has officially become a suspect. It just says that um, she was attending an inpatient treatment in Harlan, Kentucky, about 60 miles away. She went to her grandmother's home where her sons were living. On the morning of May the 7th, 2015, while visiting her grandmother, her grandmother was at a doctor's appointment. Natasha left and... She's, her grandmother said it wasn't too concerning because it wasn't uncommon for her to go places for her fr with her friends. Kentucky State Police opened an investigation and began searching uh, and, be and began using search and rescue teams using dogs, helicopters, and foot teams of family, friends, and neighbors. Unfortunately, no physical evidence was found. As law enforcement began making pleas with the public, leads started to roll in. Law enforcement learned that a female friend had picked Natasha up that morning and dropped her off at a reclaimed strip mine with a male friend. I'm choosing not to tell this man's name or the name of the friend. The friend that picked her up that morning came forward and was interviewed by authorities. According to the Charlie Project, the male friend said Natasha ran into the woods and never came back. If her last known sighting was by this man, and he says she ran into the woods right here, this is, and the friend says this is where I dropped her off at with this man, and he says she ran from this area into the woods, is that the area that was searched? And was she ever really even there? I mean, I'm sure that if this man had no knowledge of any of this, and if the friend made up this story, he would have said, listen, sh there wasn't anybody came and dropped any of these women off at you know, where I was at. I didn't see her. He's not going to make up a story saying, well, she just ran into the woods. It's not known what she was wearing, but she had packed clothes and was picked up by a friend. So her grandmother says that she didn't report her missing for a few weeks. She packed up some of her clothes, but keep in mind she had been staying in a rehab in Harlan, Kentucky. Maybe they just thought she was going back to the rehab. Would she not have told her son that in this note? But according to the family, the note said, she was going to go find a place for the three of them to be able to live. Did the family believe that? Did they believe with her struggles with drug addiction at the time that she was able, that she would be financially able to uh, support her sons on her own? But I was just looking to see if this man's name comes up in any of the rumor mill type websites surrounding Natasha Jones. His 
Natasha Jones' son believes he is responsible for the disappearance of his mother. This other woman believes that um, he's responsible for the disappearance of her mother. They both lived in the same area. They were both known drug users. Was he the drug dealer? I haven't been able to locate any information that goes in depth about the events of the morning. There were no published interviews with the friends or this alleged acquaintance. There was not even a mention of who they were. And it's been nine years since Natasha Jones went missing. It's been 11 years since Diana Roberts went missing. This man who was supposedly connected to both women is walking around free and clear. I don't know that he had anything to do with either one of these two women. If the police believe that he did, they must not have been able to find enough evidence to bring charges. And I don't know much about his history, but I'm going to look him up one quick time before I end this video. Um, it just says here, it was mentioned that a person of interest had taken a polygraph and failed. Natasha's family was offering a $15,000 reward for information leading to her whereabouts. I don't know if that reward is still available. Um, this was nine years ago. And I don't know if the family, I don't even know if her grandmother is still alive. Police and volunteers continue to search for a Knock County woman who went missing in May. Her family still hopes that she will return. Her, her grandmother had a doctor's appointment that morning in Hazard. She wasn't gone for very long. When she returned home, Natasha was gone, and there was nothing unusual about it. It started getting dark up in the evening time, and I was getting the boys ready for bed. This is when her son found the note under his pillow. So for her to leave a note under the pillow of her son and not to leave a note on the refrigerator or somewhere for her grandmother to find it means that she wanted some time. Maybe, possibly, I'm thinking she wanted some time to pass for her to be able to get away that morning. And there was so much more coverage and stories out there about Natasha Fugate Jones. There was so little about Diane Roberts. I'm glad to see that her daughter has decided to um, bring her mother's case back into the public. I hope that some cold case investigators will get involved in that. I'm not sure if it's been classified as a cold case. If it is still an open case, then I don't know. Maybe private investigators, people who just want to sleuth themselves, could look for some answers and maybe find a little bit more information on her. A lot of people commented on the Facebook post about the man that uh, the daughter and the son of these two missing women both believe were involved in both of their disappearances. They commented that he had been involved in other criminal activity and involving missing women. His family was said to have been bragging about his um, criminal activity involving women and crimes against women. And I don't know how true any of that is. Um, the police did go out and talk to him. He was a person of interest. I wasn't able to find anything more. These two women both remain missing. Their cases are really, it's, it's sad. It's two of those cases that even though one of the cases got a lot of public attention, a lot of people talking and videos being made about it, a lot of missing persons uh, websites and Facebook pages have her on there. The other one got less attention but deserves just as much and hopefully one day there will be answers for the public and for the families thanks for watching